Hello guys. Okay, so it is, uh, I don't even know what day it is. It is July 10th and I am running late on June, but I have a good excuse guys. I moved. We moved. We moved into a completely different apartment, literally right across the street. But let me tell you, I don't care if you're moving across the street, across country. I've done them all and they're really difficult. <laughs> so we just finished up and what was weird was we actually got the new apartment we weren't expecting to move. We ended up finding a cheaper apartment. Our lease came up at the same time we found a cheaper apartment. Um, and the cheaper apartment had an office. So it's not decorated. You can't really see anything yet, but this is my office. I'm very excited to get it all decorated and put together. Let's move on. Let's move on into, well, into the past because this video is all about everything that sold in the month of June. So if you guys have not seen um, any of the other what sold videos, this is how it works. I keep track of everything that I sell inside of Airtable. There is a link to create your free Airtable account right below this video, so make sure you're grabbing that. There is a training inside of the Etsy store that will walk you through how to set this up, and it will even give you a copy to just put inside of your own free Airtable account, um, and that makes things super, super easy. Or you can just kind of try to piece it all together with what I'm showing you here. So um, essentially what I'm going to be showing you is how much things cost me to buy, and then I'm going to show you how much it costs me or how much I make off of it after subtracting the uh, shipping and handling and all of the fees depending on what platform we sold it on. I'll also show you what platform we sold it on. Uh, again, I apologize for the noise. This is a pretty empty room minus some furniture. I've got to get a carpet to kind of cut down the echo in here. Just bear with me on this particular video with the weird audio. So <laughs> we're working on it. Um, so right now I have these listed in order from most expensive sale to least expensive sale. Um, and you can see that I have that. I'm going to get rid of this over here, but you can see that I have that by sell price. So again, sell price does not include shipping and handling and all of the fees that go along with that, but I will be showing you over here in the profit column um, how we did last month. So in May, we made a profit of $778.95. And then in June, we made a profit. Where did it go? Oh, there we go. I just moved it. We made a profit of $853.56. So the goal this month is to beat that. Um, okay, so let's go on ahead and jump in. So the first thing, and again, these were in order of the most expensive product to the least, not in the order in which they sold, because you can actually see uh, the sale date is over here. So we sold that one on the 20th. That one was probably one of the first things we sold on the 1st, 5th, 11th. So they're all out of order, but they're in order of price. Okay, so the first thing that we sold was a 1960s Mahjong set. Now this one actually is really important for my family and for Josh's family. This Mahjong set belonged to his father. So you might be asking why I'm selling something that belonged to his grandfather. And the reason I'm doing that is because the family asked me to. His grandmother, his grandfather passed about three years ago. He was an amazing man. And his grandmother passed away uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And so the family is still in the process of cleaning out everything, finding new homes for things, um, you know, selling some things to get money for funeral costs and all of that good stuff. So um, that's what I'm helping them to do. So they've been giving me certain things that they think are cool, but that no one in the family really wants. And this was one of those things. It's a really, it was a really beautiful Mahjong um, game. So you can see it came in this absolutely stunning like leather briefcase it came with a mahjong book it came with you know i don't i don't play mahjong and that's one of the reasons we ended up with this is because the family doesn't play mahjong either so um but poppy ron essentially brought this back from vietnam when he was in vietnam and uh yeah so it's it's a just a really beautiful um japanese call it a japanese souvenir that he brought back uh, during his travels during the Vietnam War is essentially what it was. But um, actually these were really, really beautiful. On the bottom side was an entire theme of, and I didn't realize this until after I had actually sold it, but on each of the bottom of the dominoes was the theme of a different season. So there's spring, winter, summer, and fall all on the carved on the underside of all of these. But there, it was completely untouched, absolutely beautiful. So Poppy Ron's Mahjong, 1960s Mahjong set from Vietnam. Uh, from the Vietnam War uh, costs zero dollars. Um, I was hoping to actually sell it on Facebook Marketplace. It did not sell on Facebook Marketplace, but I ended up selling it for $229. There was a $33.85. Now fees and taxes, remember that includes shipping and handling, that includes any of the fees that are incorporated with whatever platform I sold it on. I did sell this one 
on uh, Etsy. So I made a profit of $195.15. That's gonna go to the family, that's not gonna go to me. We sold it on the 20th in the month of June. These are all of the platforms that I was selling it on. Uh, my process for this, so I do cross list everything. The second something sells, Airtable allows you to access all of this on your iPhone. So the second something sells, I can come in here and click on all of the links that it did not sell on and immediately deactivate everything. Whether I'm in the car, whether I'm out with friends and family, whether I'm here at the house, I can and instantly see where I've cross posted this and immediately take everything off. So it was paid and it was sold through Etsy. So let's speed things up a little bit. That one was just one of my favorite things anyway, so I wanted to show it to you. The second thing that we sold was this huge painting um, by Ida Ness. Now I'm pretty sure Ida Ness is just a hobbyist, but it was an absolutely stunning painting. It was professionally framed. I got this at a uh, Goodwill, I believe. This was not a vintage piece, but I ended up selling it on Facebook Marketplace. So there were no fees involved in that either. Um, so I purchased it for $24.99, which in my opinion was a little bit too expensive. I don't know what I was thinking that day. And then I sold it for $80. Uh, I did list it on Etsy at one point and it was 20 cents to list that. So I included that in there. There was a profit of $54.81 and that's it. So we sold the parrot cane. Parrot cane is one of the things that I've had the longest. So this was a parrot cane from Shivari Brothers in Costa Rica. It was an absolutely beautifully hand carved parrot cane with about three or four different woods and a practically unused rubber base. So I was very, very excited to find that um, and sell that. So yeah, uh, this was actually bought in a collection. So they bought this and then they bought two Dr. Pepper glasses and two and four Dr. Pepper coasters. So they had a Dr. Pepper thing. So again, I purchased this for a little too much, but I knew it was worth a lot more. So I spent $20 on it, sold it for $79.40. Fees, shipping and handling, all that stuff cost $17.94 made a profit of $30.47, and it was sold through eBay. Uh, okay, whale picture. I loved this whale picture. I This this whale picture made me wish that our decor in our house would look good with this whale picture, because I absolutely loved it. But, um, and Josh isn't a whale guy, so <laughs> I gotta kinda keep him in mind, I guess, when I'm decorating. But anyways, this was just a really beautiful plank whale. I absolutely adored it. I thought he was cool. He had just the right amount of, you know, wear and tear on him. Um, he was beautifully painted and it was just paint. He was just painted on, um, he was just painted on planks, just on plywood. So I don't know where he came from. He felt a little polished. He felt a little, maybe like he was professionally done and sold. I don't know. Um, this just seemed really, really nice. And you can even tell by the brackets on the back. This one seemed a little bit nice. I'm pretty sure he wasn't vintage. Let's see. So I got him for $14.99, sold him for $60. I made a profit of $45.01. There were no listing or shipping and handling because I sold him on Facebook Marketplace. And I didn't list him anywhere else because he's really, really big. Uh, let's see. The other thing that I bought and sold, well, the other thing that I sold, I really, really loved this. Um, and I was, I would have decorated it in my house currently in a heartbeat had I known I was moving. Um, but this is just a white Portuguese tile tray. It was super, super heavy. This was the only bit of damage on there. And there were a couple of cracks, but they didn't mess with the, um, with the integrity of the, like nothing was coming out. Nothing like the tiles were still together. They just had little hairline cracks in it, which is obviously something that I put in side of the listing. But it was just a very heavy, beautiful Portuguese serving tray. Uh, so let's see, I ended up uh, buying this for $4, which blew my mind when I bought it. I sold it for $64.80. Uh, fees and taxes, this thing was heavy. It was so heavy and I did end up shipping it. So uh, after everything, it was $40.53. I made a profit of $20.80. We sold this one on Etsy. Um, okay, this one, Josh was really excited when I sold this one because he hates clowns. So this was a Koji Mark. If you guys follow me on Instagram, there was a video a couple of weeks ago with the clown, with this clown. And essentially what he does is you pull out the drawer and then when you pull out the drawer, the music starts and he goes back and forth like this, holding his little bouquet and it plays really creepy music. So. I loved him. I thought he was great. But he was uh, like new. He still had his little uh, cardboard note from the manufacturer in there. I thought he was super cool. Uh, so I bought him for nine bucks. Um, I sold him for $59.37. $2.76 is what he cost to ship. And I sold him. So I made a $47.41 profit. And then I sold him through eBay. Uh, so next thing on the list is a true tungsten men's wedding band. 
I was excited to sell this one because this is Josh's wedding ring from his previous marriage. It was a good marriage. There's still nothing is terrible, but um, I don't want to have his wedding ring for my wedding. So we ended up selling his wedding ring and we will use the profits to get a new wedding ring for him for our wedding in September. So I'm very excited that this sold. So it was $0 for me because I didn't buy it. Uh, I sold it for $50. Uh, there was a 20 cent, uh, I listed it on eBay. So there was 20 cents in that fee and taxes. And there was a profit of $49.80 for us. Uh, we did sell that one on Facebook Marketplace. So there was no shipping and handling or anything like that. Um, this one surprised me. Here's a learning moment for you guys. If you, I, I highly recommend there are going to be sections inside of Goodwill and Salvation that you just kind of don't ever go into. You're like, hey, I don't really know anything over there. I found things, I've, I've started looking at all of the little baggies that they have in the different sections, um, and I found more stuff that is worth more money. It's insane. Actually, uh, one thing that I'm hoping we're going to sell this month is a little bitty ashtray. I don't think it's that pretty, but it turns out it's a very highly collectible piece from a pottery company in California. I'm, and it was in one of those little baggies for like $1.50. I'm like, what? So this, these are rice paper napkins. So I'm sure some of you guys have heard of uh, rice paper napkins. I knew that they existed, but I've never really known what they're for or what people do with them. So it turns out people collect them and they use them for things like decoupage. Uh, so I was contacted, I ended up in one of those little sections. It was in the kitchen section. Um, and I found a couple of things. Also keep an eye out for glass swizzle sticks. I'm not going to sell mine because I've started collecting them because they're really really cool but you can find vintage glass swizzle sticks from the 1950s for like a dollar fifty so I got these for I think it was roughly about a dollar fifty there were probably about seven or eight packages, unopened packages, except one package was open uh, with five of the napkins missing. These are absolutely beautiful printed rice paper napkins. They sell for a lot. So they cost me $2.99 for the entire baggie of all of them. I ended up selling them for $46.28. I shipped them for six dollars and or shipped them plus fees and taxes for six dollars and seventy two cents. So I made a profit of thirty six dollars and thirty seven cents on these rice paper napkins, people. So watch for rice paper napkins. Yeah, and these sold on Etsy. Another thing, Josh was really super excited to sell the Shuko Clown. This was weird. So I picked this up at a yard sale. I honestly don't yard sale very, very much because I'm kind of antisocial and people like to have small chat and I hate small chat. But this lady was really great. She sat on the front porch. She said, you know, find everything that you want. It's all, you know, $5 or $3. I forget what the price was. I think it was $5. Yeah, it was $5. Everything is $5. I ended up, this, this is one of the things that I ended up getting. And he was kind of a last minute grab because I wasn't sure what he was or how much he was worth. But he is a little bitty violin clown from the early 1900s early 1900s uh, he's got this little keyhole in the back and he essentially moves his violin up and down now his gears do not work anymore uh, and the key has long since been lost I did have a spare key for another mechanical um, item here that did wind him but he didn't move so his gears are no longer working um, you can find these in beautiful working uh, order online. So I knew that I was going to have a little bit of competition with this guy. So I was very, very honest when I listed him. So he cost me $5. I listed him for $39.95. He retails fully functional for about $75 online. Fees and taxes were $2.66. So I made a profit of $32.09. And remember, I told people right off the bat, he doesn't work and he's missing his key. And I tried to take pictures of his condition, which is actually really good compared to a lot of other ones. He even still has one of his buttons. If I remember right, he's got a button on his butt too. Like, oh no, maybe that was another one. All right, anyways, they tend to, maybe that was another picture that I was seeing online because they tend to lose their buttons and I think I saw one stuck to one of their butts. <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, I sold him for, or uh, I may, I'm sorry, I sold him on eBay. Um, okay, the reverse painted small gesso mirror. So I actually was really sad when this one sold, primarily because there is a set of them. I had two of them, this red one and this white one. And the red one sold and the white one is still available, but I was kind of hoping someone would buy them as a set. The only reason I didn't sell them as a set is because these mirrors are a little bit uh, expensive considering they're gesso and, I think I'm pronouncing that right, correct me if I'm wrong, they're gesso and they're reverse painted and they're in beautiful condition with a little bit of 
like beautiful wear and tear on them. So the white one is still available. I can put a link to that below if anyone is interested in it. It's this really beautiful, almost mint condition one actually. This is the one that had a little bit of the wear and tear on it. You can see some of that white gesso, that white chalk coming through, um, but the white one is still available. So I will link to that one below. All right, so the red mirror I bought for $1.99 and you can see I listed all of the little defects that were on it. I sold it for $38.30 with shipping and handling plus all the fees, it was $11.57. Profit was $24.54 and I believe this sold on Etsy. Yep, so this, this one, this one is possibly by far the coolest thing I have ever sold in my life. This guys is what is called a shimmykin and a shimmykin is literally about this big, very, very, very teeny tiny. You see he's only slightly larger than a quarter and I found him in the bottom of a jewelry jar about four months ago and I finally got around to listing him and uh, essentially what a shimmikin is, is it is a very tiny charm that was created around World War One, and uh, they all kind of look the same. They all have this, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see in this fourth picture here, they all have this little bow. It doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl, they all have this little bow in the back and it says uh, shimmikin's trademark on it. There is next to nothing known about the shimmikins, but they're highly collectible. People really enjoy hunting them down and looking for them and, and finding them. I didn't know what I had when I found it, but when I did a little bit of research, I was really excited. So you can find a little bitty shimmikin football players. You can find little bitty shimmikin soldiers. You can find this guy. I don't know what this guy is. He seems to be a little bald guy in a gray t-shirt with a, with a bow on the back. I don't know. <laughs> He's very confusing for me. Someone else loved him as much as I did. Um, so I got him for roughly 37 cents. I'll do another video on how I do jewelry jars and how I figure out the cost of everything inside of a jewelry jar. You can probably guess yourself. Sold him for $35, fees and taxes, $5.97. He was not expensive to ship. I made a profit of $28.46 and we sold him on Etsy. Okay, so keep on trucking. We have this, I thought this was really cool. This one was actually really hard to sell. So mirrors for me, I sell a lot of mirrors. Um, I absolutely adore mirrors. I think they're a beautiful thing. I have mirrors, well, not currently because we don't have anything hanging, but usually in my house, I have mirrors everywhere. And it's not because I'm like, you know, want to look at myself all the time. I just, I love the way they reflect light. I love the way they just, for me, are a very wonderful I love having them. I love this mirror because it reminds me of kind of almost like a, an old 1980s bar mirror, like something you would have in a bar. With the roses, it doesn't really have that feeling, but it has that etched feel. That's just how I feel about it. So I absolutely fell in love with this. This thing was super, super heavy. It was a beast. So luckily I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I got it for 10 bucks. I love it. I uh, sold it for $35. There were no shipping fees or listing costs because I sold this one purely on Facebook Marketplace. So we made a profit of $25 and one penny. And yeah, and we sold this on Facebook Marketplace. Lusterware Pigeons. Ah, oh, I loved these guys. I absolutely adored these guys. Um, and I just got a really good review from the person who bought these, but I absolutely loved them. Uh, I think he bought them for his wife, um, but these were made in Brazil. Just absolutely beautiful lusterware pigeons. That's really the only way to describe them. They were absolutely beautiful. I got them all cleaned up and they were pearly. So I got him. I got them for $4.99. Oh, and there wasn't a single chip on them. They were in perfect condition. I was shocked. And we sold them for $33.27. Guys, you might be wondering why these listing costs are so funky. It's because I probably listed these for 25 and then shipping and handling, once the customer paid the shipping and handling, they paid a total of 33.27. So that's the cost that goes in there. I this is originally it probably said something like $25 or $27 and then shipping and handling on top of that, they sold I sold these for $33.27 and then Shipping and handling plus any fees or anything like that was $5.95. So we made a profit of $22.13 on these. And I believe these sold on Etsy. Um, okay, so reverse painted art deco frame. I sell a lot of frames. I love selling frames. It's one of my favorite things. I love going into the thrift stores and putting together like a collection of frames and then tying them together with a pretty bow and selling them that way. I absolutely love it. This was one of my individual frames though. This is a really, really old one. It sold it for uh, $32.95. It cost me $2 to purchase. It is a reverse painted picture frame. So it's got this beautiful ornate frame and then on the glass, on the underside of the glass, that's where it's painted. Be absolutely beautiful. It had a very, very old velvet back, <laughs> very old velvet back, but it was $32.95 
and there was a three dollar and nine cent fee and we made a profit of 27.66 and this was sold on ebay mice in the teapot from inesco so these guys were just adorable i just i couldn't one of those things you just can't leave on a shelf these guys were just it was an inesco teapot you can see all of the crazing but it was a little bitty tiny glass inesco teapot that you can hang from a tree or as an ornament you know inside your home whatever you want to do but it was just story time it was story time inside of the teapot they do have these two little holes back here which i'm assuming would help you hang it on a wall i actually don't know i'm not too or maybe they let light come in from the back i don't know so we got that one for three dollars 99 cents sold it for 31 dollars and three cents fees and taxes were 6.23 we made a profit of two twenty dollars and 61 cents and sold that one on etsy these guys these were fun these were really fun i actually ended up selling these surprisingly i bought them on the same day sold them separately on the same day. So these were just meant to happen. But these were two absolutely, this one and the next one were two absolutely beautiful 20th century aqua tents. My theory on these, so they actually have two different artist signatures on them. They came together, framed the same. So I know they came as a set. What I think was that these two people were part of a class because this seems to be the same kind of a scene. I'll show you. So this is the first scene. And if we take a look at this one over here, it's a very similar scene, only with a more vibrant color. So the scenes are just very, very, they're very French countryside kind of a scene. So I personally think that maybe these guys were in a class together and, and this would have been years, years, like 60 plus, 70 plus years ago. But I personally think that they were in a class together and these were the results of the class and uh, they just kind of managed to stick together this whole time. So really quickly, this first one that we looked at cost me $20. Again, these are two things. I would not recommend spending a lot of money on aqua tents. They're really difficult to sell. You have to find the right people which is why I'm shocked I found the right people on the same day. They cost me 20 cents to list. I sold each for $30. I did not make a profit on these. I, I honestly, when I bought them, it was more of an experiment. Sometimes you pay to learn. And this was one of those, this was one of those times. I bought them thinking these are absolutely stunning. They're going to be worth 50 at least. Not the case. They were worth roughly 30 bucks. So uh, I did make a little profit, but I made $9.81 and I believe I sold these on Facebook Marketplace. The Crane Animal Close in a Necklace. Um, I love this one. I absolutely love this picture. Um, I don't know why I don't have any of the other ones uploaded, but um, this was just a really beautiful crane. So yeah, uh, the necklace came down really long. I don't know why there aren't, I don't know where the other pictures are because it definitely had more pictures, but it was just a really beautiful, beautiful necklace. Again, I found this inside of a jewelry jar. So I roughly got this one for 18 cents. I sold it for 30 dollars five dollars and 75 76 cents is what it costs to ship $23.86 was my profit, and we sold this one on Etsy. Uh, this one was fun. I got this one at a Goodwill. So this is an AMF, a vintage AMF bowling bag, and it was in beautiful condition. Uh, it had very, very minor wear and tear, wear and tear that you would expect for a bowling bag that maybe was used for a short amount of time, but still used. Um, so yeah, you can see like on the back over here, you can see it just needs a little bit of cleaning on it, but uh, essentially it was just a really, really beautiful bowling bag. Um, you can see in the bottom, it's got the area where the ball would be. It's got a tag up top. So anyways, it cost me $3.99. Uh, I sold it for $30 and I believe I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. It cost me 20 cents to list. $25.81 was my profit and I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. So this is one of the frame listings that I sold. Uh, so I actually really like this one. I thought it was a lot of filigree and a lot of metal and it was just, it was really, really beautiful. Um, so yeah, it was a really, this is probably my favorite frame out of the lot. It was just a really beautiful filigree frame, probably from the early 80s, late 70s. This is just a very simple gold frame that went really, really well with that. Definitely from the 80s. I remember those from my childhood. Sometimes they came in the folding version. And then this one was was a modern frame so not all of the frames that I sell are vintage the majority of them are but occasionally I run across a really gorgeous modern frame that would sell well with a vintage lot so this is just a beautiful wooden frame it's got a little, just enough you know wear and tear on it to make it look pretty with the vintage and then it's got this beautiful uh, tin metal inlay on the inside and so the three of them together just looks this is what I love doing this I don't know why but they just look really beautiful and I can imagine them all together uh, behind a couch or hanging on a wall so um, yeah just keep an 
eye out for frames. So they cost me $5 for all three of those. I sold them for $29. It was 20 cents to list. I sold, I had made a profit of $23.80 and I believe I sold them on Facebook Marketplace. This is one I was really excited to sell. I don't know why I keep doing this guys, but I keep picking up Fitz and Floyd. I don't know why. I don't even like Fitz and Floyd. A lot of their stuff is really like kitschy and stupid. <laughs> Don't, if you're a Fitz and Floyd fan, more power to you. I'm so glad someone loves it. I don't know why I keep picking this up. I have no clue. I've literally got like four more pieces of Fitz and Floyd that I need to get off my shelves because usually they're like big and bulky. Like they're not dainty things. This was a Fitz and Floyd that we sold. Um, it's just, I believe like a sugar jar. Um, so there's a little bunny rabbit and a little teddy bear and they're besties. Um, you can keep things inside of it or I believe it's it's made for sugar. So you just put sugar in it and you'll be good. Uh, so $3.99. But I can also see this being used adorably inside of a nursery and they can keep, you know, safety pins or anything like that inside. That really actually redeems this piece. And I really feel like that would be a perfect use for it. I should have said that in the listing. So I got them for $3.99, sold them for $28.80, fees and taxes, so shipping and handling, and, and fees were $6.78. I made a profit of $17.83 and he sold on Etsy. So one of the other things that I love selling guys, if you're not checking out the textile section, go check out the textile section. I'm not a huge fan of the quilts and the Afghans that a lot of the other sellers are selling. Um, I don't like fabric that's been on other people's beds. I have, I have, I have a, an aversion to that kind of a thing. So I'm not a huge fan of picking that stuff up. I do have one or two that I've tested out and I don't think they like me either because they're not selling. But the one thing that does sell really, really well are bolts of unused fabric. Not entire bolts, maybe more like just, um, you know, just yards of unused fabric. I love that stuff. So this was a 1970s, not a whole lot. And that's the other thing, if it's a real beautiful vintage print. And again, if you guys are gonna be selling fabric, make sure, the one of the best ways to make sure that it's vintage is to sniff it. And I know it sounds terrible, but it's going to smell old if it is really vintage. Now, if it doesn't smell old, that doesn't mean it's not vintage. That just means maybe it's been washed or maybe it's been stored really, really well. But most of the time, vintage fabric smells like the 70s or the 80s. Like it smells like your grandma's home. So <laughs> just take a really big whiff of it and, um, and just know that it smells like money because that's generally what this fabric is. So this was only three, pretty much four by three feet. It wasn't a lot. So we're, you know, you can't see my hands, but it's, it's not a lot of fabric, but it would be perfect for creating a bag or something along or a pillow, a very small pillow. Um, so that is, yeah, that's that. So I got it for $1.99 at most Goodwills uh, and thrift stores sell it for very, very cheap. It cost me 20 cents to list. I did not put that into the sell price or into the fees and taxes. Um, so just know that that should be $5.51, which we can still do. That's generally what I do is get rid of the listing cost. The reason I do that is because, uh, I'll show you. So down here, where is listing cost right here? So see, these should actually be deleted and put into the fees and taxes because I like to see how much it's actually costing me to list and relist certain things throughout the month. And if it's already sold, then it's not costing me to list it anymore. So I add what I've already paid into the fees and taxes and we're good to go. So for this guy, we made a profit of $21.28 and he sold on, and it sold on Etsy. So this is something that I picked up at a closing sale for another antique store. Um, she was selling all of her merchandise, all of her leftover merchandise out of her garage. So I stopped by to see what she had. Got a lot of really cool stuff. This was one of them. This is a check bead purse, which you can actually see. It has a label on the inside that says uh, Czechoslovakia on it. But you can see that it was coming apart at the seam. But it, otherwise, it was in really, really good condition. And I did try to fix this as best as I could. And I was very, very honest in, in, the, in the description and everything. So, uh, but you can see made in Czech Slovakia. It was just a really beautiful little beaded change purse. So it cost $3. There was a 20 cent listing cost. Sell price of $28. Um, I actually did sell this one on Facebook Marketplace, but I ended up shipping it. So there were there were some shipping costs incurred on that one. So $2.66. There was a profit of $22.14. And I'm really glad it's gone because I wasn't sure I'd be able to sell it in that condition. And then Facebook Marketplace. So yeah. Uh, okay, this guy. This one I also got a really good review on. So I love this one. Um, and I love this photo because he just looks 
cheeky in this photo. Look how cheeky he looks. So this guy is one that I picked up at Goodwill. Uh, it did turn out that he was kind of a souvenir piece, but he was from the 1990s, I believe, the early 1990s, so he was still vintage. So I got him for $3.99. $27.35 was the sell price. Fees and taxes, $7.82. I made a profit of $15.34. Are you guys getting sick of all of this yet? Um, and he sold through Etsy. Okay, so this one, I am so so happy that this found a home not because I disliked it I actually loved it a lot and I knew it was gonna find a home but it went to a collector and that excites me even more so I'm excited because this piece went to a collector not to someone who just thought they were pretty bangles but this these are pieces of jewelry so I live in the Seattle area which is a very very um, populated area for Native Americans and Alaskans and Inuits, things like that, or people like that. So, uh, so we get to find a we get the pleasure of finding a lot of absolutely just stunning artwork. This is a uh, beautiful set of bangles that are done by two hated tribe artists that are very very well known artists and very popular artists they do a lot of bracelets they do a lot of um, jewelry really um, they've also done pottery and i've also seen paintings from them as well this one was gordon white from the hated tribe so this one is hummingbird so you can see kind of a, an eye and I, I believe this might be paper with shellac like painted paper with shellac i'm not totally sure and this one is called raven so you can again see the an eye and a beak and a, it's just absolutely they're, they're absolutely beautiful pieces again these went to a collector i got them in a baggie on a wall so keep an eye out for things bought for a dollar and six cents ended up selling them for 26 dollars and 69 cents and fees and taxes for three dollars and 49 cents i made a profit of 14 dollars and 36 cents they were sold on etsy i'm trying to get through these guys but we actually did a lot i don't know who says june is slow because holy toledo okay oh i miss this kitty already i miss this kitty every day i love this kitty okay, so this was just a blue pearlescent kitty cat from the 1970s it had a sticker on the bottom but if you guys recognize the sticker please tell me i could find nothing so it says l is or l i s los angeles made in taiwan couldn't find anything about this thing online um, but I love it because he's got a weird paint pattern on him. He's bright turquoise blue. He's pearlescent, which I absolutely adore. And he's just got the most cute expression. And again, no chips, no scratches, nothing. Absolutely loved it. Oh, this is the best part. Guys, he has a butt crack. He has a butt crack. Come on. So any kitty cat with a butt crack, come on. there's kitty cats. Is, it's not a cat if it doesn't have a butt crack because a butt crack's always like right there. I thought it was funny. So uh, $2.99 is what it cost me. $26.42 that included shipping. Uh, $5.63 was what they paid for shipping and all that stuff. $17.60 was my profit and we sold him on Etsy. Guys, this one has a lesson. So Yellowstone Moose Crossing Wood Sign. I'm gonna leave names and things out of it, but we did have a little bit of drama with this particular moose sign. This moose sign was purchased, uh, someone contacted me and said that they were trying to get this for their daughter's baby shower and that they were hoping that I, that I would come down and cost. I had it priced at $25 and with shipping on top of that, that would have been $35 because it was about $10 to ship. It's a big piece of heavy wood. They asked if I would come down and I said, you know, I can't come down. I actually ended up spending a little too much on this myself. So that would cut into my profits. And I also looked on her site and saw that she was a picker as well. So she should understand this. So I said, unfortunately, I can't come down, but I did just launch a sale on my Etsy store. So that'll give you a couple of bucks off. Um, so, you know, take it or leave it. She decided to take it, which was great. So um, ended up getting it packaged up, sent out that day. I had it sent out that day. USPS decided that, or they didn't decide, but they did not scan in the barcode. So she was waiting for it to get to her and it was taking a while to get to her. And you could see where I had shipped it. Like it was marked as shipped and everything. It was out my door. And it did eventually get to her the next weekend. Now, I don't know if she didn't like the piece or if she didn't get it in time for her daughter's baby shower shower. Either way, it got to her in about, it got to her at the tail end of the time limit that it said it would get to her. And she contacted me and she said, unfortunately, this is not what I expected. This is, this is not a souvenir. It is just paint on wood. That didn't make any sense to me because a souvenir is just paint on wood. Like it's not a, it's a souvenir from a gift shop. It's not 
something someone took off of the side of the road. She wasn't happy with it. And so I said, I'm so sorry about that. I would absolutely be willing to go on ahead and refund you the $20 once I see that it's being shipped back. Once I have that tracking number, I'll refund your $20. Then she said, no, she wanted me to refund all of the shipping plus the shipping back. My policies do state that I do not refund shipping. I will do that on a case by case basis. If I screw up something, I absolutely will refund the shipping. And then she and then she put in a case and then she started attacking me and I thought, you know what? No. So I ended up winning the case because Etsy policies clearly state that if it is a problem with USPS, we are not liable as sellers. We do not have to refund everything. The only time we have to refund everything is if we told them we're going to ship it within 3 days and then we ship it 2 weeks later. Absolutely, refund. They ended up closing the case in my favor, so this is still on the sold listing. So $3.99 is what it cost me to buy it. She wanted to get it for $10, I think is what she wanted it for. And I was like, no, I can't do that. I ended up selling it for $26 and 30 cents. Uh, that did include shipping and handling. $10.61 was roughly what shipping and handling was. I made a profit of $11.50. Now it's a very, very small profit for me, so you can see why I didn't really want to lower my price by too much. I think she got a discount of like $2, 2 or $3 with that original discount code. But we sold that through Etsy and I am glad it's gone and good luck to her. And these, I got a set of three of these things, uh, but they're Harry Potter blankets, unused. They still had their, their stickers on them. So yeah, it's just a Hogwarts. They're not vintage, obviously. So I, ended it on, I did end up listing all of these only on Etsy. Etsy, um, and on also on Facebook Marketplace. This cost me $6.99, sold it for $25.59, $3.99.96 for the fees and the taxes. I made a profit of $14.64 and I sold this one on eBay. And then uh, we actually had three of these. Okay, so this is the second one. It's identical to the first. Purchased it for $6.99, sold it for $25.59, $2.93 is what it cost to ship. $15.67 was my profit and I sold this one on eBay. And then we had another one one that I sold on Facebook Marketplace, I believe. So this was a set of sake cups still in their Hello Kitty box. These were not vintage. You can see it's got the 15 on there. These were from 2015, but they were perfect condition, little bitty sake cups with a beautiful condition box still included. I got them for $1.99. I could not believe that Goodwill was selling them for $1.99, but I ended up selling them for $21.95, uh, $3.09 for fees and taxes. So I made a profit of $16.87 and they sold on eBay. This is one that sold early in the month. So this is just a really cool handmade 1970s chalkware napkin holder. <laughs> I thought it was really cool. Um, it was signed on the bottom all right, and on the top, Blanche Holman, 1975. I absolutely love it. I cleaned it up. I got it for $6, sold it for $20.95. Generally, guys, with like the handmade chalkware stuff, it is really hit or miss. I don't recommend picking up every piece of chalkware that you get, only if it's in really, really great condition or if it has a really, really unique look to it. Um, that's the only time I would ever recommend it. Chalkware is really hard to sell. I happen to be a huge fan of chalkware but it's really hard to sell. So I got it for $6, sell price was $20.95, $3.63 was the were the fees and taxes, so I made a profit of $14.75 on this one and sold it through Etsy. So this one, this one surprised the heck out of me. I don't know if Victorian is becoming a new thing, but literally the day I listed this, like four or five people contacted me. One person flaked out and didn't get it, but it was snapped up really quickly after that. So if you guys ever see Victorian tablecloths, I recommend giving them a shot because they are apparently really, really sought after. I actually don't like Victorian very much. I love the history and I love the time period, but I don't like this. I'm not a huge fan of this. Reminds me of my grandmother and I love my grandmother, but her taste isn't coming around for like another 10 years, I think. So maybe Victorian will be popular in another 10 years. Apparently this is the area for it. This is a very, very pop, uh, very, very popular and beautiful tapestry. Um, I got it for $3.99 and it was completely finished. So you can see around the edges, it was completely completely sewn off and finished. This wasn't an unused piece of fabric. This was like a tablecloth. Uh, so $3.99. The sell price was $20. I sold this on Facebook Marketplace, I believe. I made a profit of uh, $15.81 and Facebook Marketplace. Um, okay, this one I'm so glad is gone. I loved it when I bought it. I still love it. 
But I'm so glad it's gone. This thing was huge and it weighed like a bajillion pounds. So I can only sell this one on Facebook Marketplace. Literally no choice in the matter. But it is an is a raggedy Andy doorstop. And he's a chalk wear raggedy Andy doorstop. He was really, really cool. He had some vintage damage done to him. Lots of dust, which I tried to clean up as best I could. Uh, but let me tell you, like 50 years of dust on clay is... That's hard to clean. Um, but you can see you can see a little bit of the chalk work coming through. There was a crack in his hand. Again, I try to be very, very upfront and show people exactly, you know, what they're gonna get. Unfortunately, and this wasn't a big thing, but this was made with the tape from Goodwill because Goodwill likes to tape things. So um, he wasn't signed on the bottom, but yeah, he could hold any door during Gale Force wins. The thing was heavy. So $4.99, sold him for $20. I think I had him listed for more at one point, but I just kind of wanted him out the door. Made a profit of $14.81 and sold him on Facebook Marketplace. All right, American Wild Fowl. This was actually early in the month as well. I think Andy and the bird were pretty much on the same day. Um, but this is a really cool, almost like you get the kit and then you paint the bird. It was really popular in the 80s and the 70s. And in fact, I think this one's dated 1985. So American Wild Fowl series, Craft Hex Inc. And then this one was signed by the person that did it, by the artist who got it. But they're very, very beautiful. You can find a whole bunch of different versions out there. But this one was a, what kind of duck was this? I forget. A hooded merganser. Merganser. Hooded merganser. Um, so I thought he was absolutely beautiful. Um, he wasn't very heavy. He was a light wood. So he would just be beautiful on a desk or on a shelf. I purchased him for a little too much. Purchased him for $7.00. Luckily, they're kind of collectible. So $20 is what he sold for and $12.81 was the profit on that one and uh, sold him on Facebook Marketplace. These were really, really beautiful and I was sad to see them go, but I have a lot of Dorothy Thorpe and so we didn't really necessarily need these. Uh, these were not Dorothy Thorpe. In fact, these were completely unbranded. I couldn't find any symbols for Libby or Dorothy Thorpe or any of the other companies out there. I just said Libby style, I believe, or Culver style. I said Culver style on these. So yeah, they were just in the the woman who bought them said that they just got a new home and they were just looking for beautiful glasses to put on the bar. They weren't necessarily looking for brand names. So I made sure she knew that they had some wear on them and that they were not brand name. Um, but yeah, I sold these through Facebook Marketplace. It was a beautiful set of four. Uh, they cost $8 for me to buy, which I think was a little bit too expensive considering it was only a set of four and they didn't have a caddy or anything with them. But I sold them for 20, made a profit of $11.80. Uh, and sold them on Facebook mar Marketplace. This one surprised me. So I got a whole bunch of shakers for like $1.99. We're I'm still working through them. Like I, mean, I haven't even photographed all of them yet. Um, but earlier in the month, I got like 20 shakers. These sold within an hour of me posting them. So Marumoto Wear Victorian Woman Salt and Pepper Shakers from the 1930s. One was a salt and one was a pepper. They have other versions where the bottom kind of twists off and that's how you fill it. And they also have teapots and creamers. There was like an entire tableware set of this girl and they come in various colors too. There's like a pink and a turquoise. Anyways, she's a little bit more earthy toned um, and they were made in Japan in the 1930s. Uh, so I bought, I bought her for two dollars and thirty nine cents. Seventeen fifty one was the sale price. Two sixty eight for fees and taxes. Twelve twenty four, and I believe I sold those on Etsy or eBay. eBay. Uh, okay, straw house. This one's been around for a little bit, a little while. But this was a straw house that was a jewelry box. So essentially, each one stacked on top of each other. You can see the little velvet interiors there, and they stack up to make a full house. I do believe that there, it used to have a little roof that went up here, but it has long since disappeared. I made that clear in the listing as well. Um, but yeah, it's just a really, really cool vintage. Uh, I'm assuming I think it's Japanese or it's Chinese. Okay, I think it might. I think it had a sticker on the bottom. Yes, it did have a sticker on the bottom. Um, made in China. That's how I knew it was Chinese. Um, okay, so uh, this one purchase cost was two ninety nine. Listing cost was twenty cents. Sale price was seventeen forty six. Three oh nine for fees and taxes. So I made a profit of eleven dollars and eighteen cents on this one. Uh, and it sold on eBay. I love selling pottery. I don't know why. And we're talking like gardening pottery. I love garden pots. Um, I have a little collection going on my back deck and my husband is, or my, my fiance is about ready to kill me. Vintage Mexican pot. It literally says Mexico on it. So I do actually believe this was kind of more of a um, souvenir from Mexico, <laughs> but I absolutely thought it was just beautiful. So he's got a beautiful bird, yellow bird on one side and kind of an orangey bird on the other. It was a very, very thin pot. And this is one of the reasons why I loved it. Generally, the look of this pot is okay, but probably not one that I would have purchased. But when I picked it up, it was so thin and dainty and just 
Oh, it was beautiful. So um, I went on ahead and grabbed it for three dollars. So sixteen sixteen is the sale price. Five seventeen is the fees and taxes. I made seven dollars and eighty cents on that one, and it went through Etsy. Okay, inlaid wood and shell trinket box. This is one that I have owned since I was a kid. Uh, my friend, my friend Robert, brought it back for me when he was traveling when we were younger. He's a huge friend of the family, and I love it, but I've never used it, and I'm really trying to purge things right now. Robert will understand he's coming to my wedding. So Robert, I love you and I love the box, but I love you more. <laughs> I've got other things to remember Robert by. This particular box, we would we decided to go on ahead and sell. So $0 in purchase cost, $15 sell price, 20 cents for, for listing and then a profit, a profit of $14 and 80 cents. And we sold that one through fa Facebook marketplace. This one actually sold in conjunction with the, with a picture, which picture? One of the pictures, one of the big old pictures. Okay. So so the porcelain Japanese goldfish tea mug. I thought this one was absolutely beautiful as well. It was very, very dainty. I'm pretty sure it was very, very modern, um, but I thought it was really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I would decided to go on ahead and, you know, for $4, I went on ahead and purchased it. I purchased this more as an experiment. I didn't know what these go for. So I thought I would take a look. I still have zero idea what these symbols stand for. I have done as much research as I can. So if anybody knows, Please let me know. Um, and it's got another little symbol right down here, a little stamp right there. It looks kind of like a little bug, but I don't know. I don't know what it means. So anyways, I uh, got it for $3.99, sold it for 15 bucks, made a profit of 11 dollars one because I sold this on Facebook Marketplace. Let's see, the Odagiri Chickadee Mug. Loved, I love Odagiri. Like I know that it's like a fad right now and everyone's like, Odagiri sells, but I swear to God, I love Odagiri. It's absolutely beautiful stuff. And this one I thought was really fun because it came with, it was a Gibson greeting card Odagiri mug. It just had little chickadees on it. Pretty little chickadee prints. Uh, one of them's eating a poor little butterfly. It's actually kind of a sad mug when you think about it. But I got it for $1.19 at Value Village. Sold it for $13.69. It cost $4.30 after all was said and done. So my profit was $8. And I believe I sold this one on Etsy. This one, and if you guys head over to um, the Etsy store, you guys can see this as well. It comes with a video. It comes with a download where you get all of this. You actually get access to all of this 24-7. So you can come in any time of the month and see what it is I'm selling, how my month is doing, all that good stuff if you want but essentially uh, up here in the top right hand corner we after you buy this up here in the top right hand corner there is a little copy button you can click the copy button it pulls this entire system over into your spreadsheet so that you can go through and start adding in your own stuff uh, if that makes sense but I show you the video shows you how to set it up walks you through all of the little bits and pieces all of that good stuff um, so yeah we sold one of those uh, so sell price for that is it cost me zero dollars because I did it myself um, it cost me or so I sold it for thirteen dollars and sixty cents that was with the fees and all of that stuff one dollar and fifty four cents for fees and taxes so I made a profit of eleven dollars and eighty six cents on that and Etsy is the only way I'm selling that there will be a link below Low. This one I didn't really sell so much as donate it. So there is a there's a summer program here for the deaf and the blind, deaf and blind children. And this year they had a pirate theme happening. So they were going to build a huge chest and fill it full of pirate thing things that make pirate noises and sounds and things like that. And so uh, the woman who runs that reached out and asked if I would be willing to donate my pirate ship because it's a music box so they can hear, you know, music noises and things like that. And I said, absolutely. So they're going to use this as a trophy for one of their events and went on ahead and listed that. And you know what? For $2.99, I think that was very, very well spent. And I really hope that they love it. I cleaned it all up, got all the dust off, made sure it was wound perfectly. So made zero profit on that, but I love it. I'm glad. I'm glad I went to a really good home. Okay, so um, they she contacted me through face, Facebook Marketplace. This was sold with that Shivari cane that we were going through a second ago. So he bought two sets of glasses, which were really cool glasses because if you looked at them in the early 2000s, Dr. Pe I think it was the 2000s, Dr. Pepper went through a phase where they were letting artists come up with different styles of art for Dr. Pepper. So all of these were different fan art for Dr. Pepper, basically. And then they had the coasters to match. So you can see these were four of the most popular fan arts for, yeah, for Dr. Pepper at the time. That is, that sold with the cane. Um, so I actually have zero on these as well because all of that was factored into that cane as well. Oh, okay. And this one was sad. This is the only time I have ever had anything broke broken, but she sent me pictures and I was really quick to take care of it. So I went on ahead and refunded her the entire shipping and handling plus the pitcher as well for this one but it was a Takahashi cat clay pitcher I still crown the inside it was so cute look how cute it was but unfortunately 
this is how the handle got to her and I'm so sorry for that because oh oh it was so pretty I hope I hope that she's glued it back together and is using it for flowers or something where she doesn't have to pick it up by the handle I hope she's been able to find a use for it because that's just so sad but I refunded her everything for it which does mean that we, we ended up losing a little bit on this one because I ended up paying for you know the shipping and handling and all of that stuff and I didn't make any profit on that one so sadly that one didn't work out but I really really hope that she can still use it and then of course we see let me come back over here so my May eBay was $59.79 in uh, fees and they send these the month after so that that was for May I paid it in June so that I include that in with my June fees I bought thank you postcards for $36.79 so everyone who orders I will show you actually so uh, now everyone who orders gets cards that say thank you and I write a little love note on the back and then it also has a little business card that simply says Terra Dime Radioactive Blueberry on Etsy and Instagram. That way if they're buying through eBay they can go check me out on eBay. Um, so that was, uh, those were some of the things that I purchased. Comic book sleeves. I am starting to sell comic books. And more, more importantly, I'm starting to sell comic book ads. I will get, I will do a whole video on that. I'm very excited about that. Um, let's see, tubs and bubble wrap for organization. I bought those, so for 15 bucks. Packing tape and a $2 donation at Walgreens, $6.94. Packing supplies, $20. And business cards and signage was $52. So all of that included, all of that included, we did $853.56 in complete profit. So that's after all of the taxes and fees are done, after all of the listing costs are done, we did $853.56. Uh, July is looking pretty darn good as well. It is the 10th and in the middle of a move, in the middle of a four day move, we've already made a profit of 181. It doesn't sound like a lot, but considering we've had a lot going on this month, <laughs> I'm proud of that. I think we're doing good. Uh, okay, so we'll go into that though in August. So that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. If you guys have any questions about anything that is sold or anything that I'm listing or how I'm listing it or why I'm listing it, um, feel free to put those in the questions below. I would love to answer those questions for you. If you really like this video and you managed to stick through the whole freaking thing, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and that like button and make sure you're leaving me a comment below and telling me what it is you are are most excited to see about what we sold like was there something in here where you were like oh my god I wish I got it first let me know below what it is you wish you'd gotten your hands on or if you are one of the buyers let me know below what you ended up getting your hands on with that being said I will see you guys in the next video bye